Hello, my dear students. Welcome back. So, in the previous session, we were discussing the standards on auditing, and if I'm not wrong, we are done with two standards actually. We have completed discussing about SA 250, which is talking about auditors' responsibilities relating to laws and regulations while conducting an audit of the financial statements. Then we have understood SA 501, which is talking about specific considerations for selected items. So, how to obtain audit evidence regarding three selected items, which are how to obtain evidence regarding existence and condition of inventory, how to obtain evidence regarding litigations and claims, and how to obtain evidence regarding segment reporting. What specific considerations we have to keep in mind, we understood in SA 501. So, since we are done with two standards in this class, we will begin understanding the next standard. We will take up for discussion SA 505 now. Sir, what does this SA 505 deal about? Let us try to have a quick understanding about it. See, as you could see the title, the title of SA 505 is External Confirmation. So, let us try to understand what does this SA 505 deal about. So, what is the title guys? SA 505 is going to talk about External Confirmation. See, if you remember, when I was telling you about the introduction of the standards on auditing, I told you about that numbering system. So, ICA has actually reserved a each series of numbering for specific category of standards. Like if you take SA 200 series, it is going to deal only with the standards relating to general principles and responsibilities. Whereas SA 300 to 499, this series is dealing about risk assessment and how to respond to the assessed risk. SA 500 series is going to exclusively talk about audit evidence. So like this, we understood that I have explained you earlier that each series of standards is dedicated for each category. So SA 500 series of standards is dedicated for the concepts or standards relating to audit evidence. Like SA 500, it is talking about overall audit evidence. SA 501, as we have also seen earlier, it is also talking about audit evidence only, but it is talking how to obtain audit evidence regarding selected items. Similarly, SA 505 is also a standard relating to audit evidence only. SA 505 is a standard which is also related to audit evidence only. Sir, how come it is related to audit evidence? See, as you could see the title here, they are saying SA 505 talks about external confirmation. Did we come across this external confirmation earlier as a part of our earlier chapters? Yes. If you remember, when we understood the chapter audit documentation and audit evidence, in that we have understood one question, what are the various methods to obtain audit evidence? Do you remember that? we discuss the chapter audit documentation and audit evidence there we have understood one question called what are the various methods to obtain audit evidence in that i have explained you seven methods which seven methods i have explained it contains inspection it contains inquiry it contains observation it contains external confirmation recalculation re-performance and analytical procedure so we have this seven methods for obtaining audit evidence and one of that method out of the seven methods to obtain audit evidence, one of the method is what? External confirmation. So external confirmation is actually one of the technique or one of the method also you can say to obtain the audit evidence. So now what does this standard talk about us? What exactly is the meaning of external confirmation? How we can use external confirmation as a method to obtain better audit evidence? What are the various types of external confirmation? So what if you don't get the response for external confirmation? So all these things we are going to discuss in this particular standard. So now you tell me, is the standard SA 505, is it having some related relation with the audit evidence? Yes. So SA 505 is going to talk about odd external confirmation, which is one of the method or technique for obtaining audit evidence. Clear everybody? So, in this chapter, we are going to understand in a detailed manner what is the meaning of external confirmation, what are the types of external confirmation, what is the procedure for obtaining evidence through external confirmation. So, all these things we are going to have a in-depth understanding in this particular standard on audit. So, without any delay further, let us uh, go into the technicalities of this particular standard. So, first I will begin with what exactly is the meaning of external confirmation what exactly is the meaning of external confirmation that we will try to understand it so this we have already know this we already know it in simple terms what is the meaning of external confirmation 
So external confirmation means a direct written response obtained by the auditor from a third party that we call it as external confirmation. So what is external confirmation? A direct confirmation. It is a direct written confirmation. We have to be very careful. It has to be written confirmation. So a direct written confirmation obtained by whom? Auditor. So auditor is getting a direct confirmation from whom? From a third party. When I say third party, outside of the client, apart from the client. So when I say third party, they could be debtors. They could be debtor. They could be creditors. They could be bankers. So or any external party. It could be any external party. So the evidence which the auditor is obtaining by way of a direct written response. So let me put it this way. A direct written response obtained by whom? Auditor. Given by whom? Auditor is obtaining the direct, the direct written response. From whom auditor is getting the direct written response? He is getting it from a third party. So it, uh, the evidence which you are getting by way of direct written response by the auditor from a third party. When I say third party, someone from outside of the client's organization. If you are getting a written response directly from them, that we are going to call it as external confirmation. So let me give you some simple examples. Assume I am conducting audit of the client X Limited. I am conducting audit of the company X Limited. Now in my company's books of accounts, in my client's books of accounts, I am able to see that there is a debtor. There is a debtor. The name of the debtor is Mr. A. Mr. A is a debtor. And in the books of accounts of my client company, they are showing that they have a receivable of some 1 crore rupees from the client, from this debtor. So I'm conducting audit of the client X limited. When I verified their books of accounts, there is Mr. A, he's a debtor. In the books of accounts, they are showing that this debtor is required to pay them 1 crore rupees of money. They are showing it as a asset receivable. Now I want to know whether really this debtor is required to pay 1 crore rupees of money to my client company. That means whatever amount of 1 crore which has been shown as receivable from Mr. A in the balance sheet, is it correct or not? I want to obtain audit evidence. See, to obtain this audit evidence, I can try to get it in multiple ways. When I say multiple ways, I can do the inspection, I can verify the books of accounts, I can check the invoices, I can check the bank statements, all this I can do. In addition to that, one more technique what I can do is, I can do external confirmation here. What do you mean by I am doing external confirmation? So I am an auditor, I will send an email to him or I will send a letter to him. To whom? To the data. Mr. A is a data, no? To whom I will directly send an email or I will send a letter, physical letter, whatever it is. So in that letter, I will write, sir, I'm a debtor of the, I'm an auditor of this company. So I'm an auditor of this company. So while I'm verifying the books of accounts of this client company, X Limited, they are showing that you are required to pay them one crore rupees of money. <clears throat> my client is showing that you are a debtor of my client company and you are required to pay some one crore rupees of money. Please confirm whether you are really required to pay one crore rupee of money or not. I'm writing an email to the debtor directly. Dear data, dear cust, uh, dear someone, dear Mr. A, I am an auditor of this company. I came to know that you, my client is saying that you are required to pay to my client one crore rupees. Please confirm whether it is correct or not. <clears throat> so either I send an email or I send a physical letter. Now the data responded back to me. The data has responded back to me. He told, yes, sir, I am required to pay one crore rupees of money to the client X limited. Is it evidence or not? Yes. This is what simply I am using here, external confirmation. This is what simply, the technique which I am following here, here is what? External confirmation. I am getting a direct written response from the third party. That is an external confirmation. Similarly, I am conducting audit of the bank, uh, audit of the client X limited. I am able to see that in their uh, books of accounts, they are saying that they are having an SBI account with one branch, one branch of SBI. And they are saying that they have 10 crores worth of balance in their savings bank account or their current account, whatever it is. Now, as an auditor, I want to know whether really they have 10 crore rupees of amount in their bank account. So now what I can do is I can send an email to the concerned bank manager, whoever that branch manager is there to that concerned branch manager. I have sent an email, sir, I'm an auditor of this company X limited. My client is saying that he's having 10 crore rupees of deposit with your bank. Please confirm whether you really have, whether your bank is really having 10 crores worth of deposits on behalf of my client. I send them an email. <clears throat> I send them a letter. Now the bank manager responded back to me. Yes, sir, your client is having 10 crore rupees of money with our, 
so just a minute guys so the branch manager has responded back to me saying that yes so this particular this particular x limited is a customer for us and they are having a bank account with us in their bank account there is 10 crores worth of money available so here also it is what external confirmation so if you observe in all these cases external confirmation means it is one of the method it is one of the technique to obtain audit evidence and how the audit evidence will be obtained in this method the auditor will get a direct written response from whom from a third party when we say third party outside of the client's entity so third party could be debtor third party could be creditor third, third party could be banker so from some third party if the auditor is getting a direct written response that we call it as external confirmation so you tell me external confirmation whatever evidence that you are getting by way of external confirmation does it fall under internal evidence or external evidence see on the basis of source we have divided evidences into two categories now what are they internal evidence external evidence you tell me external evidence will fall under which category external confirmation will fall under external evidence why external evidence first of all what is the difference between internal evidence and external evidence i hope you guys are able to remember the evidence which is originated within the client's organization we call it as internal evidence the evidence which is getting originated outside of the client's organization that we call it as external evidence now you tell me external confirmation is an external evidence or not yes why why because external evidence is getting generated external confirmation is getting generated outside of the client's premises when you are asking confirmation from the data data is giving you the confirmation it is getting generated outside of the client's premises so that's why external confirmation is one of the external evidence and it is a bit more reliable when compared with internal evidence this we have already covered it in the chapter inter uh, audit documentation and evidence so when we do a comparative study between internal evidence and external evidence which one will be always more reliable external evidence will be a bit more reliable than when compared with internal evidence clear okay so we understood what is the meaning of external confirmation and will it form part of internal evidence or external evidence now next we will try to proceed ahead and understand what are the types of confirmation request types of external confirmation guys one more thing here see i am specifically stressing here when you get a written response that is only called as external confirmation the standard recognizes only written response see assume that i am an auditor i made a call to the data made a call to the data i called the data and told sir i am auditor of this company my client is saying that you are required to pay 10 crore rupees of money to my client please confirm the data gave me a response over the call yes sir i am required to pay can that be called as external confirmation no that can't be called as external confirmation when i say external confirmation the standard sa 505 recognizes only written response as an external confirmation oral responses or oral confirmations from the third party can't be taken as external confirmation that is not correct understood so only direct written response from a third party is a external confirmation not oral confirmations however this written response can be either in physical form like you are you are writing a letter sending the letter to the third party third party is once again sending the letter back to you it could be physical written response or it could be electronic written response when i say electronic you are sending an email the third party is responding back to email you are sending a whatsapp message the third party is responding back to you with the whatsapp message that is also written response only so the thing here is it should be written response that written response could be either in a physical format or it could be in electronic format that doesn't matter but the response should always be what written response oral response doesn't have any validity as external confirmation it is not recognized by the standards clear now so let us proceed ahead now and try to understand what are the various types of external confirmation request see we can divide external confirmations into two categories one is positive confirmation request and the other one is negative confirmation request so let us try to understand what is the positive confirmation request and what is negative confirmation request let us try to understand it so we will try to understand about first now the positive confirmation request but for that guys please get familiar with the terminology external confirmation request can be divided into two categories one is positive confirmation request and the other one is negative confirmation request now we will proceed ahead and understand what is positive confirmation request and what is negative confirmation request that we will try to understand it in a detailed manner so shall we do it guys let us do it now so let us try to understand now what are these two kinds of 
confirmation request. So we'll begin with what is a positive confirmation request. Let me put it in very simple terms. So they say that positive confirmation request refers to such a confirmation request where an auditor expects a third party to respond to respond to the confirmation request either he agrees or disagrees with the information provided in the confirmation request positive confirmation request refers to such a confirmation request where the auditor expects a third party to respond back to him either if the third party agrees agrees with the information given in the confirmation request or if he disagreed with the information contained in the given given confirmation request if i am expecting a response from the third party always in all the circumstances either he agrees or disagrees such a confirmation request i am going to call it as a positive confirmation request see let me put it very simple assume that i am an auditor of a company okay so there is a debtor third party from whom i want confirmation response I sent an email to him. I sent an email to him. Now, my email reads something like this. My email is reading something like this. I am an auditor of this company. Please, uh, my client says that you are required to pay to my client 1 crore rupees. Please confirm. Please confirm whether you agree or disagree with the information provided in the request. I am writing an email. In my emails, I am not able to write the detailed email, but I am telling you the summary. So this is what the content in the email, re email reads as. Sir, I am an auditor. Dear data, dear so and so person, I am an auditor of some company. While conducting audit of this company, I came to know that my client is saying you are a data for my client company. And even they are saying that you are required to pay them 1 crore rupees of money. Please reply back to me. Please confirm whether you are really required to pay 1 crore rupees or some other amount. So if you read this email, now you have to get what is the auditor's expectation. Now, auditor is expecting this third party who is a debtor to respond back to the auditor. Either he degree, either he agrees with the information given in the request or he disagrees with the information given in the request. Which means I am expecting this debtor to respond back to me if he agrees. So, if he agrees, I am expecting a response that debtor should give reply back to me. Yes, sir, I am required to pay 1 crore rupees of money to this so-and-so company. If the data disagrees with the information in the request, then also I am expecting a response. What's a, in what manner? So I am expecting a response from the data. No, sir, I am a data agreed, but I am not required to pay 1 crore rupees of money. I am required to pay only 80 lakh rupees of money. So as an auditor, you look at the expectation of the auditor. Don't look at the third party's response. Look at auditor's expectation. If as an auditor, I am expecting my third party to respond, either he agrees with the information given in the request, or he disagrees with the information given in the request. In all the circumstances, as an auditor, I am expecting a response from my third party. If he agrees also, I want a response from him. If he disagrees also, I want a response from him. Such a kind of confirmation request, we call it as positive confirmation request. Now, let us talk about negative confirmation request. Sir, what could be the meaning of negative confirmation request? Very simple, guys. It refers to such a confirmation request where an auditor expects a third party to respond the auditor expects a third party to respond only when they disagree with the information given in the request. If I am sending a confirmation request to the third party and if I am expecting them to respond back to me only in case if they disagree with me. If they agree with the confirmation request, if they agree with the information given in the request, I don't want a response from them. I need a response from the third party only when they disagree with the information given in my confirmation request. Sir, now how does a negative confirmation request look like? Now, assume another scenario. I am an auditor. There is a data. I am sending an email to him. I am sending an email. Now, my email reads something like this. Dear sir, I am an auditor of this company. I came to know that you are a data to my client company. And my client says that you are required to pay 1 crore rupees of money back to me. Money back to the client. And please respond back to me only if you disagree with the information. What I am saying? My client is saying the data is required to pay 1 crore. I am asking the data, dear sir, my client is saying you are required to pay them 1 crore rupees of money. Please reply back only when you disagree with this information. I am clearly writing in my email, sir, if you agree with the information, if you also agree that 1 crore rupees is you are required to pay, don't respond back to me. That I will take it, if I don't get a reply, I will take it as implied acceptance. You please respond back to me only if you disagree. 
that means if you deny this information if you say that if you if you have an opinion that no i am not required to pay 1 crore i am required to pay 80 lakhs or i am required to pay 1.2 crore somewhat if you differ with the information if you disagree with the information which is there in the confirmation request then only respond back to me this kind of confirmation request i call it as negative confirmation request guys able to get the difference i am trying to explain in very simple terms so a positive confirmation request refers to such a confirmation request where as an auditor i am expecting a third party like debt arbitrator banker whoever it is if i am expecting the third party to respond back to the auditor either he agrees or disagrees with the information contained in the request either he agrees with the information or disagrees with the information if i am expecting a response from the third party in all the cases that i call it as a positive confirmation request on the other hand, I am expecting a response from the third party only when he disagrees with the information given in the request. I want a response back from the third party only when he disagrees. If he agrees, I am not expecting any response from him. Such a confirmation request, we call it as a negative confirmation request. Now, sometimes I act smartly. The auditors are very smart, no? So, sometimes I assume I am acting smartly. So, I am an auditor. Okay. There is a debtor. In my client's books of accounts, my client is saying that there is a debtor is required to pay 1 crore rupees of money to me. I want external confirmation. So, I sent an email to the auditor. Sorry, I sent an email to the debtor. In my email, I wrote something like this. Dear debtor, dear so and so person, I am conducting audit of this company. I came to know that you are a debtor to my client. Please confirm or please let me know what is the amount you are required to pay to my client to differentiate between the previous examples and this example in the previous examples i am telling him the amount and asking him to confirm whether he agrees or disagrees now in this case i am acting a little bit smartly what i am doing is i am an auditor i am sending the email to the debtor and i am asking him so my client says you are a debtor please tell me what is the amount you are required to pay i am directly asking the information from the debtor i am not asking him to confirm i am asking the information directly from the debtor now, this will fall under positive confirmation request or this will fall under negative confirmation request. See, in the previous cases, what happened is, I told him the data, I told the data, the amount which is required to pay, required to pay, I told him whether he agrees or disagrees. But now what I am doing is, I am sending an email, I am just letting him know that, sir, you are a data, agreed. But you tell me what is the amount you are required to pay. I am not asking the data to confirm, I am asking the data to give me the uh, I am not asking the data to give me the confirmation. I am asking the data to give me the information. Now, this also will fall under positive confirmation request only. So, positive confirmation. Why? Because when you ask the information from the data, that means you are always expecting a reply from the data. No. Here, there is no question of agreeing or disagreeing. I am directly asking the information from him. That means in all the circumstances, you are expecting a reply from him. So, this also will fall under positive confirmation request. Able to understand? So, positive confirmation request can happen in two ways. One is, if the auditor is expecting a third party to respond, either he agrees or disagrees with the information in the request, or if the auditor asks the information directly, the auditor is asking the information directly from the third party, that also will fall under positive confirmation request only. Whereas, when it comes to negative confirmation request, if as an auditor, I am expecting a response from the third party, only when he disagrees with the information given in the request, that will fall under negative confirmation request. Clear and comfortable everybody? Right. So, we have understood three things till now. Three, three definitions I have explained. Number one, what is the meaning of external confirmation? Number two, what is the meaning of positive confirmation request? Number three, what is the, what is the meaning of negative confirmation request? Clear everybody till here? Comfortable with the discussion? Now, I have one question for you. Before I proceed any further, I have one simple question for you. So, between positive confirmation request and negative confirmation request, which one is more reliable? The question which I have is now, between, I have told you what is the meaning of positive confirmation request. I told you what is the meaning of negative confirmation request also. Now, my question is, if I ask you your opinion, assume what the standard says, if I am asking your opinion, you understood the concept now? So, simple question, I am putting it before you. Between negative confirmation request versus positive confirmation request, which one do you think is more reliable? Which one you can trust more? So, the answer is, the positive confirmation request is a bit more reliable than when compared with the negative confirmation request. Positive confirmation request is much better than negative confirmation request. Everybody agree with me? 
now i need logic for that okay i told you the conclusion positive confirmation request is bit much better than negative confirmation request it is more it is more reliable than the negative confirmation request but i want to know why why positive confirmation request is more reliable very simple in layman terms we will try to i will try to explain this point assume that you sent a positive confirmation request or let us assume you sent a negative confirmation request you sent a negative confirmation request to the debtor you wrote in the mail sir my client is saying you are required to pay them one crore rupees of money please confirm only when you don't agree with this if you agree don't give me any response if you don't agree then only you respond back to me so i sent an email but what actually happened is this email was delivered to the debtor debtor did not see the mail only he did not see the mail only he did not open the inbox and see the mail only see when the debtor doesn't see the mail will he give a response no he will not give a response when he doesn't see the email itself when he did not open the inbox and he did not see the email then why he will reply he will not reply so i did not get a reply so now i will be jumping here saying that okay i did not get a response from the debtor so that means he has agreed with the information this debtor's balance is correct only but what has actually happened here you sent a negative confirmation request debtor did not see it at all if the debtor did not see it at all how can you expect a response from him but you will be jumping there you will be you will be in excitement there you will come to a conclusion okay i sent a confirmation request to the debtor he did not reply that means he, he agreed with the information so this kind of mistakes can happen in case of negative confirmation request but if you send a positive confirmation request what will happen is assume you sent a positive confirmation request to the debtor now debtor did not see the mail debtor did not see the mail i told him in the email sir my client is saying you are required to pay them 1 crore rupees of money please confirm please tell me whether you agree or disagree with this information but the thing here is the mail did, the mail was not seen by debtor see if the debtor did not see the email when i don't get the response within a certain period of time i will not form a conclusion here if i don't get a reply from the debtor because i am always expecting reply no so as an auditor if i sent a positive confirmation request and if the debtor debtor did not give me the reply what i will do is i will call the debtor and inform sir i sent a email you did not check it please check and reply back or else i will send a top up mail i will send one more email sir i have already sent you mail earlier please check and give me back a response so if i send a positive confirmation request if i don't get a response within a suitable period of time i will do the follow up what i will do follow up so that i can get the correct information but in the case of negative confirmation request there is no concept of follow up i will not do the follow up why i will not do the follow up in the case of negative confirmation request if i don't get a response i will come to a conclusion that the third party agreed with the information but if i don't get a response in the case of positive confirmation request i will do a follow up till the time i get the response so that's why we say between positive versus negative which one is more reliable positive confirmation request is bit more reliable does that mean i am saying you don't use negative confirmation request at all no i didn't say that i never said you should not use negative confirmation request did i say it no i am not saying it just what i am saying is when you do the comparison between positive versus negative confirmation request positive confirmation request will be a bit more reliable nowhere i said you have to use only positive confirmation request you should not use negative confirmation request i am not saying it so finally the conclusion which i want to make here is whether auditor wants to send positive confirmation request or he wants to send negative confirmation request that auditor himself has to decide using his professional judgment the standard did not say you should make use of only positive confirmation request you should make use of only negative confirmation request they did not say it that is something auditor himself has to decide based on his professional judgment but when we do a comparative study between positive versus negative positive confirmation request is bit more reliable than when compared with a negative confirmation request everybody comfortable with the discussion till here whatever we had okay so three things i have explained three definitions we have understood number one what is the meaning of external confirmation what is the meaning of uh, positive confirmation request what is the meaning of negative confirmation request now let me proceed ahead and explain few more definitions see here there is one more term which we need to understand exception there is one more important terminology which we need to understand here we need to understand what is the meaning of the term exception see when i put it in general sense exception when i use it in common uh, english literature the normal meaning of the term exception is something unusual general meaning when i say dictionary meaning if you search for the meaning of the term exceptional something unusual that is what the meaning of exception but this term exception has been defined in a specific manner in sa 505 this term exception has been clearly defined in sa 505 sir how they have defined it very simple guys 
they say that a difference between information which is there in confirmation request the information which is there in the confirmation request and the response which you got from third party if they are not matching if there is a difference between the two that difference we simply call it as exception if there is a difference between information which is there in the confirmation request or even you can say information which is there in the books of accounts why because whatever information that is there in the books of accounts regarding that only we try to get a confirmation so information which is there in the confirmation request or information which is there in the books of accounts is not matching with the response which is given from the third party the response which is received from the third party that difference in the essay uh, in the standard terminology we call it as exception one simple example to understand assume that as an auditor i sent a confirmation request my client is x limited in my client's books of accounts there is one debtor mr a that debtor balance is showing it as one crore where in the books of accounts so i sent a confirmation request to the debtor mr a i sent a confirmation request dear sir please confirm my client says that you are required to pay them 1 crore rupees of money which is there in the books of account please respond whether you are required to pay 1 crore rupees of money to my client company or not now the third party gave a response what response he has given is no sir i am not required to pay 1 crore rupee i am required to pay them 80 lakh rupees only so i got a response from a third party saying that he is not required to pay 1 crore rupee as i mentioned in the confirmation request but he is saying that he is required to pay only 80 lakh rupees now if you carefully observe here the information which is there in the confirmation request or books of accounts and the response which is provided by the third party both are not matching there is a difference this we call it as exception this we call it as what exception this is what the meaning of the term exception so the difference between information which is there in the confirmation request or in the books of accounts and the response provided from the third party if both are not matching that difference we call it as exception understood the definition guys now i have one conceptual question to ask for you you have to think and tell me the answer don't uh, immediately blabber out whatever comes to your mind so just i want you to think once and then give me the response so we understood what is the meaning of the exception now my question is does an exception always mean a misstatement i told you what is the meaning of exception now my question is whenever there is an exception can i always say that is a misstatement exception does it always mean misstatement whenever you get a difference between the information which is there in the confirmation request and the response which is provided to you by the third party take this example only in the books it is 1 crore the response which i got is 80 lakhs so does that mean there is 20 lakh rupees of misstatement for sure will you automatically form that conclusion no no the point which i want to make here is the exception doesn't always mean a misstatement don't jump to the conclusion that the moment you find any difference in the response from the third party that doesn't always mean misstatement sir why do, why it doesn't always mean a misstatement sir let me tell you one simple logic see here my client company has made a sale on 28th of march my client company made a sale raised a sale invoice risk and reward also got transferred on 28th of march only for 20 lakh rupees of sale risk and reward got transferred so my client company recorded this sale entry recorded the sale entry they recorded they debited this uh, a account a account debit to sales account they recorded the entry on 28th of march only but this stock was delivered to this debtor mr a on 2nd of april so he recorded purchase entry on 2nd of april he recorded purchase entry on 2nd of april but if you see my client's book sale entry is also see, sale entry is already recorded in 28th of march so as on 31st of march if you check my client's books of accounts the amount was 1 crore rupees after adding this 20 lakh rupees but since the stock reached late to the third party he recorded the purchase on 2nd of april that means almost financial year is changing not almost altogether financial year is changing this will form part of his liability in the next year yes or no so now you tell me it is whose mistake it is not my client's mistake why because as i told on 28th of march invoice was raised risk and reward everything got transferred so my client is correct only he recorded entry correctly as on 28th of march it is a mistake from the third party he did not record the purchase on time that's why in his books our client's account is uh, will show it as he is required to pay only 80 lakh rupees as on 31st of march 
but my client recorded correct entry he recorded on 28th of april itself sale entry so that's why in my client's books is uh, it will show mr a is required to pay 1 crore since mr a did a mistake in recording that's why his account is showing as on 31st of march they are required to pay only 80 lakh rupees so what i mean to say here is whenever you find a difference whenever you find any exception don't automatically jump to a conclusion that your client has made a mistake in the books of accounts. No. Sometimes exception could happen because of third party's mistake also. Sometimes exception could happen even because of third party's mistake also. So that's why don't be of a wrong notion. If you get a difference in the response given by the third party, that doesn't always mean a misstatement. Exception doesn't always mean a misstatement. Exception could happen even sometimes because of a mistake happening in the third party's books of accounts also. Clear everybody? So, four definitions I have explained to you. Number one, external confirmation. Number two, positive confirmation request. Number three, negative confirmation request. Even I have explained the meaning of the term exception. Clear? So, now I have one more uh, term to explain. I have one more uh, definition to explain. But before that, we will read the material. So, whatever definitions we have read till now, that we will read it. So, I say 505. Let us have a quick look at the definitions. First, they are defining what is the meaning of external confirmation. External confirmation may be defined as audit evidence obtained as a direct written response to the auditor from a third party. That third party, we also call it as confirming party. Why? Because they are giving the confirmation. No. So, when I say third party, data, creditor, banker, they are giving the confirmation. So, they are also called as confirming party. So, evidence obtained by the auditor as a direct written response to the auditor from a third party, also known as con confirming party, either that could be in paper form or even it could be in electronic form or other medium. When I say electronic form, that could be email, WhatsApp, whatever it is. So, currently we have only physical form, electronic form. We don't have any other medium. If in future any other medium comes, they are covering it also. But one thing you have to always remember, oral confirmation is not having any validity as external confirmation as per SA 505. Why? Because in the definition, they have clearly mentioned it is a direct written response. Only written response has validity as external confirmation. Next one. Positive confirmation request, a request that the confirming party, that is a third party, respond directly to the auditor, indicating whether the confirming party agrees or disagrees with the information in the request, or providing the requested information. As I have told, two things. If you are expecting the third party to respond, either he agrees or disagrees, or if you ask the information from them directly, like I am saying, sir, I came to know you are a debtor. Please confirm how much amount you are required to pay. I am asking information directly from the third party. This also comes under positive confirmation request. Then coming to the next one, negative confirmation request. A request that the confirming party respond directly to the auditor only if the confirming party disagrees. If I am expecting a reply from the third party, only when they disagree with the information provided in the request. If they agree, I am not expecting a response. If they disagree, then only I want a response. This we call it as negative confirmation request. And then exception also I have explained. This fifth point also I have explained. Fourth point, I will come to that later. Exception, a response that indicates a difference between information requested to be confirmed or which is contained in the entity's records. Nothing but information which is there in the books of accounts or when I say information which is there in the confirmation request, both will be same. Whatever information that is there in the books of accounts, that only I need a confirmation. So, it's a difference between information requested to be confirmed or which is contained in the entity's records and the information provided by confirming party. That is, that means whatever information which is there in the confirmation request and the response which is provided by the third party, if both are not matching, if there is a difference between the two, that, that we call it as exception. You add one more line here. Does an exception always mean misstatement? No. So, you add that line here. An exception, an exception doesn't always an exception doesn't always mean a misstatement. See why exception doesn't always mean a misstatement? Sometimes a difference might also happen because of mistake happening in third parties books also. So don't jump to a conclusion. Whenever there is a exception, don't automatically form a conclusion. Your client only had done a mistake. No, sometimes even third party could have made a mistake. That's why you are getting a different response. That also could happen. So four definitions we have understood. Now we have one more definition to understand, which is non-response. Let us try to understand what is the meaning of this term non-response. See, this definition is a bit tricky but I will try to explain it in simple terms. So we have to understand that meaning of the term of non 
response what is the meaning of non response just a minute guys what is the meaning of non response let us try to understand it so they tell you two scenarios one by one first i will explain the concept then we will read the definition with that concept will be clear so non response in includes two scenarios number one you are an auditor you are an auditor you sent a confirmation request you sent a confirmation request either positive or negative you are an auditor you sent a confirmation request to the third party that confirmation request could be either positive or negative but that was undelivered that was returned undelivered that was returned undelivered this scenario we call it as non response you are an auditor you sent a confirmation request either that could be a positive confirmation request or that could be a negative confirmation request but it did not get delivered and it was returned to you like for example you sent a letter so you have sent a letter you have written a letter you have written a confirmation letter you have posted it but that post was not delivered why because whatever address you have given in that letter that address was not found the postman gave it back to you so you have sent a confirmation request either positive or negative but it was undelivered it was it came back to you or you are sending an email you are sending an email you entered the two email address in the two box you have to enter the email no so when you enter the email and click the send button that mess that mail was not delivered see when you try to enter wrong email address what will happen immediately you will get back a reply the email address was not found this message was failed to be delivered so try it out sometimes if you want uh, whether if i am saying correct it or not if you want to know it just do it you can find it out so you if you write an email to some non existing email address if that email is not found you will get a reply you would try to do it in the gmail only if you try if you try to send it to some non existing email you will immediately get a reply that this mail was not found your message was failed to be delivered so like this either you sent a physical copy of the letter you got it back it was undelivered because address is not found or you sent a email immediately you got a reply that that message can't be delivered this scenario we call it as non response so auditor sent a confirmation request either positive or negative but it was returned undelivered this scenario will come under non response there is one more scenario which will come under non response what is that so other scenario which will come under non responses so you are an auditor you are an auditor you sent positive confirmation request you sent what positive confirmation request not negative you sent positive confirmation request it was delivered it was delivered to third party but third party did not respond the third party did not respond either he did not fully respond or he did not completely respond so he did not respond you did not get a proper response from the third party this also will come under non response only you sent a positive confirmation request it was delivered to third party but the confirming party or third party they did not give me the response this scenario also we call it as what non response like i sent a confirmation request to the debtor it was delivered but the debtor is not giving me response that we call it as what non response however if you are sending a negative confirmation request if you are sending a negative confirmation request and if it was a delivered to third party and if it is not giving response can that be called as non response no that is a implied response hope you are able to find this you are an auditor you sent a negative confirmation request that means you told a third party to respond only when he disagrees and in that case if you did not get the response can we call this as non response no this scenario will not come under non response why this scenario will not come under non response why because in case of negative confirmation request when the third party is not responding back to you it is a implied confirmation from the third party that he disagrees he agrees with the information in the request you send a negative confirmation request and if the third party is not responding that implies that he agreed with the information so that we can't call it as non response that is a implied response only so implied response oh, uh, sorry non response includes two scenarios you are an auditor you sent a confirmation request either positive or negative and it was undelivered this scenario will come under non will come under non response you are an auditor you sent a positive confirmation request it was delivered to third party but the third party is not responding that is also non response 
However, if you are an auditor, you sent a negative confirmation request and if the third party is not responding, this will never come under non-response. Why? Because in case of negative confirmation request, if you are not getting a response, that is a implied acceptance from the third party. Clear? So that's what they try to say here. Very important for true or false statements. They can uh, twist and ask you the question here. So non-response, a failure of the conforming party to respond. That means third party is not responding or fully respond are you are they partly responding they are not completely responding to a positive confirmation request that means you send a positive confirmation request it was delivered but the third party but the conforming party failed to respond it properly or you sent a confirmation request either positive or negative it has returned undelivered so that's why i explained clearly here first i told you the two scenarios explain in a detailed manner so second part if you read this so let me read it once again if you read this particular part which one this one a confirmation request returned undelivered that means they are referring to here either positive or negative you send a confirmation request either positive or negative but it has been returned undelivered now when you talk about the first part they are saying you send a positive confirmation request but the third party failed to respond this also will come under non-response clear so these are the five definitions which we have covered in this standard what is the meaning of external confirmation what is the meaning of positive confirmation request what is the meaning of negative confirmation request what is the meaning of non-response and what is the meaning of exception so all the five definitions we have covered clear and comfortable everybody now sir why this standard has been given sir what is the objective of the standard i told you every standard will have an objective what is the objective of this standard the objective of the auditor when using external confirmation procedures is to design and perform such procedures to obtain relevant and reliable audit evidence. Meaning that this standard is trying to help out the auditor. It is giving the guidance to the auditor. How you can, how he can use external confirmation in a, in a best possible manner so that he can obtain relevant and reliable audit evidence. So in simple terms, in the common language, if I have to put it, this standard is telling you in a detailed manner, this standard is going to give you guidance how you can send a proper what and all tips what and all guidance you need so that you can send the external confirmation and get the evidence in a proper manner how you can get that evidence in a perfect manner by using external confirmation that guidance is given by this auditor given by the standard that is what the objective the purpose of the standard is to help the auditor to use the you to use the external confirmation in a best possible manner and to obtain the best possible audit evidence clear everybody so with this we are done with definitions and objective let us proceed ahead and try to understand the remaining concepts of this standard now let us talk about the next content so the next thing which we are going to say is what is the procedure for external confirmation so if you want to obtain the best possible evidence by using this method external confirmation this standard is asking you to follow four steps so this standard SA 505 is going to let you know the detailed audit procedure which you need to follow to obtain the best possible evidence from external confirmation. So which they call it as external confirmation procedure. SA 505 says that if you want to obtain best possible evidence from external confirmation procedure, you need to follow four steps. You need to follow four steps in order to get the best possible evidence from external confirmation procedure. If you follow these four steps, you will get best possible evidence. If you are missing on any of the steps, you will not get that much reliable evidence. So what are that four steps which I need to follow to get the best evidence from external confirmation? So the four steps are listed down here. As you could see, step number one, determining the information which you want to get confirmed or which you want to request. Number two, select the appropriate confirming party. Number three, design your confirmation request. And number four, follow up on the confirmation request wherever appropriate. So if you follow these four steps wisely, then you can get best possible evidence from external confirmation. So what are the four steps, guys? Step number one, step number one, determining the information regarding which you want to get a external confirmation. Number two, once you have selected regarding which information you want to get external confirmation, the next step is selecting the appropriate confirming party. So once you have selected the information regarding which you want external confirmation, once you have decided who is the appropriate confirming party, the third step is designing the confirmation request. Now you have to sit and design the confirmation request. Once you have designed the confirmation request, you will send it. After you have sent it, you have to do the follow-up wherever necessary. 
See, let me try to explain each of this step in a detailed manner. First, I will explain the concept. Then we will read and finish that part. But before that, I want each and every one of you to repeat what are the four steps in the external confirmation procedure. Number one, determining the information regarding which you want to get the external confirmation. Number two, selecting the appropriate conforming party. Number three, designing of the confirmation request. Number four, do the follow up wherever necessary. Now, let us try to understand each and every step in a detailed manner. Let me talk about step number one. Selecting the information or deciding the information regarding which you want to send a confirmation request. Guys, mainly we want to get information by way of confirmation request whenever it is uh, related to amounts. So, even uh, when I put it in different way, assume that there are some 100 debtors. Will we try to get confirmation from each and every debtor? No. First, you have to select out of this 100 debtors regarding which debtor you want to get the external confirmation. There are some 100 bank balances. There are some, uh, uh, or let us assume there are some 20 bank accounts with which the company is having the bank balances. Will you try to get external confirmation from all the bank accounts? Might not be. So, there might be bulk of information in the financial statements, but it doesn't mean for each and every information we will select external confirmation only as a method. Why? Because other, apart from external confirmation, we have six other methods for obtaining audit evidence. We can do inspection also, we can do inquiry also, we can do observation also. In different, different circumstances, different, different methods we use. It doesn't mean always we use only external confirmation. So, out of so much of information which is there in the financial statements, first you have to select regarding which information you want to sell, you want to get evidence through external confirmation. Like regarding debtors, you want external confirmation or you want external confirmation from creditors or you want confirmation from bankers. If yes, from which bank account, from which debtor, from which creditor. So, first you have to decide regarding which information you want to obtain external confirmation. And one more thing I want to put it here, which is the standard says, see mainly we obtain audit evidence by way of external confirmation regarding quantitative information. We try to mainly use external confirmation for amounts and balances, like whether debtors balance is correct or not, whether creditors balance is correct or not, whether bank balance is correct or not. So like this, you might say that, sir, mainly we use external confirmation to confirm amounts and balances. Regarding quantitative figures, regarding the amounts and balances, we try to get the external confirmation. But my question is, do you think external confirmation usage is only restricted for amounts and balances? Can't we use it for any other cases? There is no doubt. We use external confirmation mainly for amounts and balances confirmation. But my question here is, is the use of external confirmation restricted only to amounts and balances? The answer is no. We can use it even for other qualitative aspects also. Apart from amounts and balances also, we can use external confirmation. How sir, for example, you, to, you, you came to know that your client has kept some stock with a third party. Inventory is lying in the custody of a third party. You can get a confirmation whether the stock is really there with the third party or not. You are asking qualitative things. Sir, do you hold the stock of my client company? You are using external confirmation. Not for amounts and balances. Apart from amounts and balances. Or you want to know, for example, you, uh, your client is saying that in their balance sheet, they have some 10 buildings. They have 10 buildings. They showed me only ownership documents of 9 buildings. I asked them, show me the ownership document of another building. Now my client told me, sir, that ownership document we are not having. We gave that building as a security for the loan. So the original documents of that building were there with the bank. What did the client tell me? Sir, original documents of the building were there with the bank. We are not able to show it to you. Now I want to know, really original documents of the property are there with the bank or my client is saying wrong. I, I can get confirmation regarding this also. I will write an email to the bank manager saying, sir, my client is saying he kept his original documents of the property with you. Please confirm, do you really have original property documents with you? You are getting a response from the third party. This is also external confirmation. Did I use it for amounts and balances? No. I used external confirmation to know whether property documents are there or not. Other than amounts and balances. Or assume that I want to get a confirmation. What is the interest rate on loan? My client is saying they are getting the int they are uh, they are required to pay interest at the rate of 12%. I want to know whether really interest rate is 12% or less. So I am asking confirmation uh, apart from amounts and balances. Able to understand. My client is saying they did not give any discount to the customer. I want to know whether my client really gave the discount or they did not give the discount from the customer. I can get confirmation regarding that also. 
So the point which I want to make here is there is no doubt we mainly use external confirmation for amounts and balances. But it is wrong to say we use external confirmation only for amounts and balances. We can also use external confirmation for other than amounts and balances. For qualitative aspects also we can use external confirmation like inventory held with the third party, ownership documents there with the banker, whether discount is really given or not, is there a side agreement. So even for this other than amounts and balances also we can try to get the evidence by way of external confirmation. Understood? Clear everybody? So whatever it is, number one step, if you want to get evidence from external confirmation, the number one step is you need to select regarding which information you want to get a external confirmation. So once you have selected it, the second step is selecting the appropriate conforming party. Okay, you decided regarding some data, you want to get a external confirmation. Assume that your client company is there, you are conducting audit of client X limited. Your client X limited sold some goods to Reliance Industries limited. So Reliance Industries Limited is a debtor for your client company. Now you decided, okay, from the Reliance Industries Limited, I will get an external confirmation. To whom you will send the email? You have to send email, no, to get the confirmation. To which email you will send it? You tell me, in the Reliance Industries Limited official website, they will have their official email ID. Will you send the confirmation request to that official email ID? If you send it, can you expect a response from them? No. You can't know, you can't get the response just by sending, just by writing the email to official email address of the data. You need to know in the, in the client, in the third party's premises, who is the concerned person? That concerned person's email you have to get. If you send the email to that concerned person in the third party's premises, then only you will get the response. If you directly write an email to the Reliance Industries Limited official email address, no one will see it, no one will respond it. So you can get a response and whether that response is reliable or not, that will depend whether you are sending the confirmation request to the appropriate conforming party. You should not just like that send it to the official email address or uh, whatever you feel like to them, you should not send it. You should find out who is a concerned person in the third party's premises to whom if you send the email, you will get a response and that response will be reliable. So if I, if Reliance Industries Limited is a debtor, so if it is, if he's a debtor for me, that will be a payable for, payable for Reliance. So I need to find out who is the concerned person in the accounts payable department of Reliance Industries Limited and that person's email address you have to know. To that person, if you send the email, then you will get the response and that will decide whether your response is reliable or not. So after you have decided the selected information regarding which you, regarding what, regarding which you want confirmation request, the next step is select the appropriate conforming party. To whom you have to send the email, you have to decide it. Why? Because when you send the email to the appropriate party, then only you will get the response, then only the response will be reliable. But here there is a problem. In selecting appropriate conforming party, you will not know all the details. You can't know, see, you know only the name of the data, Reliance Industries Limited. Sir, but who is the concerned person in the Reliance Industries Limited to whom the email has been sent? Will you be able to know it? No. Who will know it? Client will know it. So now you become helpless. You have to take the help of the management of your client. Ask them, sir, I want to get a confirmation from the third party. Tell me the concerned person's email address. So whatever it is, taking the help of your management of the client, you have to select the appropriate confirming party. To them, you have to send an email. So at this stage, at the second step in, in deciding appropriate conforming party, I become helpless. I have to take the help of the client's management. Then you can decide who is the appropriate conforming party so that you can send them the email. So two steps I have told. Number one, select the information regarding which you want to send the confirmation request. Number two, select the appropriate conforming party. Number three, you have to design your confirmation request. So what do you mean by designing your confirmation request? Like as I have told in the external confirmation also two types, positive, negative. You have to decide whether you want to send a positive confirmation request or you have to send a negative confirmation request. See, I told positive is more reliable, but I never said auditor should use only positive. So auditor can use either positive or negative that depending upon his choice. So once you have selected the information, once you have selected the appropriate conforming party, now the next step you have to focus on designing of the confirmation request, whether positive or negative. You have to use your past experiences. You have to say, you have to decide whether you will send it in a paper form or you will send it in an electronic form or the email or you will send a WhatsApp message to him. Yes or no? So like this, you have to take various steps relating to design of the confirmation request whether positive or negative, either in paper form or electronic form. I will consider my past experiences. So all those things I will put together, then I will design the confirmation request. That is the third step. Now you tell me, after designing the confirmation request, will you keep it to yourself? 
you designed confirmation request will you keep that confirmation request safely in your locker no you will send it so you will design the confirmation request and you will send it so we selected the information regarding which we want to send a confirmation request we decided the appropriate confirming party we designed the confirmation request and we sent it and the last step is follow up we have to do the follow up wherever appropriate but listen carefully we will not do follow up in all the cases we will do the follow up only in the case of positive confirmation request you send an email you did not get a response within a suitable amount of time then you will do even follow up like you call the customer and say sir you did not uh, give a you, i sent a mail you did not give a reply or you send a follow up mail so like this after you have sent the confirmation request you need to do the follow up where appropriate where it will be appropriate to do the follow up it will be appropriate to do the follow up only in the case of positive confirmation request in the case of negative confirmation request we don't do follow up why because if we send a negative confirmation request and if the third party is not responding back to us that is an implied acceptance from a third party so these are the four steps which are associated which you need to follow carefully if you want the if you want to get the best possible evidence from external confirmation procedure guys able to understand so now i want each and every one of you to repeat what are the four steps which you, have, which you have to follow in order to get best possible evidence from external confirmation. Number one, select the information regarding which you want confirmation request. Number two, select the appropriate confirming party. Number three, design your confirmation request and send it. Number four, do the follow up. Now, if we have a look at the material, each and every step will be explained in a detailed manner. So we have understood the concept. Now we have to read the material and uh, uh, now we have to read the material and understand these four steps in a detailed manner. Able to see here? So these four steps concept I have explained. Now what we should do? We should read these four steps which are given in the material. Shall we do it guys? Let us do it now. So external confirmation procedure. When using external confirmation procedure, the auditor shall maintain control over external confirmation request including. That means when you are using external confirmation procedure, you need to maintain control over the following steps. That means they mean that you need to follow the below steps when you want to uh, when you want to go for external confirmation procedure number one what is the number one step determining the information to be confirmed or requested external confirmation procedures frequently are performed to confirm or request information regarding account balances and their elements as i have told mainly we use external confirmations for amounts and balances for example bank balances account balances accounts payable balances inventory balances etc However, the use of external confirmation is not just restricted to account balances. That means, yes, mainly we use it for amounts and balances. But however, the usage of external confirmation is not restricted only to amounts and balances. It can also be used for other qualitative aspects like to confirm the terms of agreements and contracts. That means whether the terms and conditions of the contracts and agreement are correct or not, that we can confirm it. Transactions between an entity and other party, really a transaction has taken place or not. Your client is saying they have made sales. You want to know whether really sale happened or not. That also you can get to know by external confirmation. Confirm the absence of certain conditions such as side agreements. When I say side agreements, they are referring to discounts and all. So whether your client has given and entered into any side agreement for the purpose of giving discounts that you want to confirm. Or property deeds given as security to the banker. That means your client is saying the property documents are given to the banker as a security. You want to know whether really the property documents are there with the banker or not. You want to know about it. There also you can go for external confirmation. So the summary of this entire paragraph is we mainly use it for amounts and balances. But, but its use is not just restricted only to amounts and balances. We can use it for other qualitative aspects also. So once you have selected the information, the next step is selecting the appropriate confirming party. Responses to confirmation request provide more relevant and reliable audit evidence only when confirmation requests are sent to confirming party that auditor believes is knowledgeable and the information to be confirmed about the information to be confirmed. That means whatever responses you get to confirmation request, whether they are relevant, whether they will be reliable or not, that depends on whether you are sending the confirmation request to that confirming party who is having knowledge and information about the info about uh, the thing which you are asking. That means you have to send the confirmation request to appropriate confirming party who knows about that information, then only that response will be reliable. Otherwise, that response is not reliable. For example, a financial, institu a financial institution official who is knowledgeable about the transactions or arrangements from which confirmation 
is requested may be the most appropriate person at the financial information financial institution from whom to request information just one example they are giving if you want to get information from some financial institution so you have to find out who is the concerned person like for example you want a confirmation regarding bank balances so you have to know who is that concerned person in that particular branch to whom if you send an email he will have the information and give me the required response generally that person will be branch manager so i will select appropriate uh, confirming party to be branch manager to whom uh, to him i will send the confirmation request then that response will be reliable so the second step is selecting the appropriate confirming party third one is designing the confirmation request the design of a confirmation request may directly affect the confirmation response rate and also reliability and the nature of the audit evidence obtained from the responses which means whether you will get the response or not what is the response rate that means whether you have a chance of receiving the response or not receiving the response that depends on design of the confirmation request one simple example if i have to give you between positive versus negative confirmation request which is having higher confirmation response rate which have high chances of getting reply obviously positive confirmation request will have high chances of getting reply than the negative confirmation request so your confirmation response rate and whether the reliability and nature of audit evidence that all depends on what is the design of your confirmation request how you design your confir confirmation request is very important to determine that response rate and also to determine reliability of audit evidence factors to be considered when designing confirmation request when you are designing the confirmation request what things you have to keep in mind number one identified risk of material misstatement so generally we will send the positive confirmation request wherever risk is very very high when the risk is very low, we might prefer sending the negative confirmation request. So one thing which I have to keep in mind when designing the confirmation request is what is the risk of material misstatement. If it is very high, I should never use negative confirmation request there. Similarly, it depends on layout and presentation of confirmation request. Nothing but do you want to send it in physical form or you want to send it in an electronic form. That also you have to decide. You also need to consider prior experience. If you have already conducted audit of this client in the past. You have to use your past experience also like if you have done audit of the last year also you will better know if you use if you use negative confirmation it will be better or positive confirmation it will be better if you send it in a paper form it will be better if you send it in an electronic form it will be better so if you have already done some earlier audits for the same client you can use your past experience also it also depends on assertions being addressed it also depends on that particular item of the financial statement see some items will be very very material very significant items will be there there i will send positive confirmation request some items may not be that material there i will send negative confirmation request so it depends on that assertion also and it also depends on method of communication once again repeated point whether you want to send it in a paper form or electronic form and it also depends on management's authorization or encouragement to the conforming parties to respond to the auditor Confirming parties may only be willing to respond to a confirmation request containing management's authorization. Now, some third parties, when you send confirmation request, some third parties will be very crazy. So, assume I am an auditor. I sent a confirmation request to some debtor. Now, debtor, he will take out the time, read the mail and give me reply. He will not confirm. He will ask me a counter question. Hey, you are asking me the information. Why should I believe you are an auditor? If you get the management's approval, then only I will give you a response. Like this, some debtors and third parties will be crazy. They will be willing to respond only when I have management's approval. So if you want to send a confirmation to the debtor, and if you know that that, let, that debtor is this kind of crazy fellow, he will respond only when I have management's approval. Then what I should do? First, as an auditor, get the management's approval, attach that management's approval, then send the confirmation request, then only he will respond. So like this, some third parties will insist on this. They say that they will respond only when we have a confirmation, only when we have management's authorization. So like that, check whether in the current case, the third party requires management authorization. If he is insisting for management authorization, send uh, get that management approval, then only you ask for response. And also one more point, one more factor, which we have to keep in mind, the ability of the intended conforming party to confirm or provide the requested information for example individual invoice versus total balance you should also know about the patience levels of the third party for example some third parties will be very patient enough if you ask them invoice wise details also they will confirm they will give you a response even if you ask invoice wise details also some third parties will be very good people they are very patient people so even if you ask them invoice wise details also they will give you a response 
now th some third parties will not have that much amount of patience when you ask them invoice wise details what they will do you know after reading the mail they will delete your mail what they will do they will delete your mail so you should know how patient the third party is if the third party is a good person if he is ready to share with you detailed information from those kind of people you can ask even invoice wise confirmations also if the third party is not that patient enough we should not play games with him we should not ask invoice wise details from that third party we should only ask for total balances if you uh, if there is some impatient third party from him you are asking con in, uh, from uh, from that third party if you are asking invoice wise details you will never get a response so you should even know the patience levels of the third party whether he is ready to give you invoice wise details or he is ready to give you only total details that also you should know and accordingly you have to design your confirmation request clear everybody so you have to design your confirmation request properly why because your design of the confirmation request will determine whether you will get a response or not whether that confirmation will be reliable or not that depends on your design of the confirmation request and there are some factors which i need to keep in mind when i am designing the confirmation request what will be that factors i need to keep in mind what is the risk of material misstatement i need to keep in mind what is the presentation which i have to follow i need to use my past experience i need to pay attention to the given item of the financial statement i need to decide on my method of communication i need to check is the third party requesting the management's approval and also i need to decide how much level of detail the third party is ready to provide so keeping all these factors in mind i will design the confirmation request so i selected the appropriate confirming uh, so i decided the information regarding which i want confirmation i have decided the selected party confirming party number three i have designed the confirmation request and definitely after designing i will not keep that request with me what i will do i will post it so once you have sent the confirmation request what is the last step follow up you have to do a follow up sir what do you mean by follow up when you don't get a response within a proper time you have to do a follow up like you have to call that third party and say sir i have sent a email please check and respond or you have to send a top up mail send one more mail sir i have already sent you mail earlier please give me a reply so like this after you have sent the confirmation request you and you have to do the follow up also but one thing you have to keep in mind we will not do follow up in all the cases we will do follow up only in the case of positive confirmation request why because in the negative confirmation request when you don't get the response it is a implied acceptance from the third party so that's what they say the auditor may send an additional confirmation request when a reply to a previous request has not been received within a reasonable time you send a confirmation request earlier but you did not receive the response within time then what you should do follow up this follow up we will do only in the case of positive confirmation request so if you follow these four steps carefully what are the four steps number one determine the information regarding which you want the confirmation number two select the appropriate confirming party number three design the request and send it finally do the follow up if you follow all these four steps carefully then you can get best possible evidence from external confirmation procedure understood so this is regarding the third point now let us try to understand few more aspects of the remaining part of the standard now in the point number d the standard is trying to help you out in what circumstances you can use negative confirmation see at the beginning of the chapter i gave you uh, i gave you this explanation already between positive versus negative which one is more reliable positive confirmation request and to the extent practically i have seen 99% of the auditors will use positive confirmation request only does that mean you should not use negative negative request at all no even the standard is also telling you can use negative confirmation request only in certain cases don't always use negative confirmation request to the extent possible try to use positive confirmation request only you try to use negative confirmation request only in certain circumstances who is saying it standard itself is saying they are telling you in which circumstances you can go and use negative confirmation request sir why the standard is so specific and they are giving you guidance in what circumstances we have to use negative confirmation request why they are so specifically talking about negative confirmation request the logic is very simple negative confirmation request is less reliable i told you why it is less reliable one simple logic guys if i ask you see when you will use negative confirmation request i will say wherever the risk is very low wherever the chances of misstatement are very low if the items are very small insignificant amounts are there so in those areas where the risk is very very low or those items which are very immaterial very negligible amounts are there in those cases only we can use negative confirmation request don't use negative confirmation request when the risk is very very high 
Why? Because when the risk is very high, we should rely on best evidence and best evidence will get it by positive confirmation request. So that's what even the standard says. You can use negative confirmation request in those areas when the risk is very, very low, when the amounts are very small, that means amounts are very immaterial amounts are there. In those kind of low risky areas, insignificant immaterial areas only, you can use negative confirmation request. Don't use especially in those areas where the risk is very, very high. So that's what they try to explain here in the next paragraph. So let us read it. Negative confirmations provide less persuasive audit evidence than the positive confirmation. What do you mean by persuasive here? Convincing. So negative confirmation give less convincing audit evidence than when compared with positive confirmation. We all know this. Positive confirmation will give best evidence. When compared with positive confirmation, negative confirmation will be very less convincing. Accordingly, the auditor shall not use shall not use negative confirmation request as the sole substantive audit procedure, as the only audit procedure to address an assessed risk of material misstatement at the assertion level. The meaning of this sentence is you don't use negative confirmation request as a only audit procedure whenever the risk is very, very high. When you find there is a risk of material misstatement in that area, don't use negative confirmation only as audit procedure, sole substantive audit procedure. For example, I found that in the area of purchases, the risk of material misstatement is there. So that's why when I'm verifying purchases or assume that I'm verifying debtors. In the area of debtors, there is a risk of material misstatement. Since I found in the debtors, risk of material misstatement is high. I will never use negative confirmation request as only audit procedure. As a sole substantive audit procedure, I will never use negative confirmation request. Since the risk is very high, either I will use positive confirmation request or I will perform other techniques along with negative confirmation request. See, if the risk is very high, either you go for positive confirmation request or you use negative along with other techniques like inspection, inquiry, all this I will do along with that negative confirmation request I will do. So, wherever risk is very high, don't even dare to use only negative confirmation request as an audit procedure. There you are taking very much higher risk. So, if the risk is very high, either go for positive confirmation request or use negative confirmation request along with other techniques. Don't use negative confirmation request as sole substantive audit procedure, as the only audit procedure when you find the risk of material misstatement in an item of financial statement. Then, the auditor shall use negative confirmation request as sole substantive audit procedure when all of the following conditions are present. Now, the standard is also saying in which kind of areas you can use negative confirmation as a only audit procedure. In the previous point, they are saying don't use negative confirmation request only as an audit procedure when the risk is very high. Now, the standard is even telling you in what circumstances we can rely only on negative confirmation request. They say that we can use negative confirmation request as the only audit procedure when all the following conditions are present. When all these conditions are present, then we can use negative confirmation request only as audit procedure. What areas guys? The auditor has assessed risk of material misstatement as very low. You came to know that the risk of material misstatement is very, very low. The chance of happening misstatement is very low. And auditor has obtained audit evidence that operating effectiveness of controls. And also you came to know that internal controls are very effective. The chance of happening misstatement is very, very less. And also the population of items subject to negative confirmation comprise a large number of small homogeneous account balances, transactions or conditions or uh, the items of the financial statements regarding which you want to get the confirmation. They are very negligible amount. For example, in the Reliance Industries Limited, there are some debtors. One debtor is having uh, in the in the books of accounts, one debtor account shows he is required to pay 1 lakh rupees of money. For Reliance, one debtor is there, he is required to pay 1 lakh. There also will you send positive confirmation request, wait for his response, do the follow-up, all this you will do? No. Since the amount is very, very small, homogeneous, very insignificant item, there also you can uh, take a chance. You can send a negative confirmation request there. Similarly, a very low exception rate is expected. That means you are expecting a less chance of differences here. Exception means was difference, no. A very low exception rate. That means you are expecting a very less chance of differences. Then also you can use negative confirmation request. Or the auditor is not aware of the circumstances or conditions that would cause recipients of negative confirmation to disregard such request. See, this sentence is a bit tricky. Let me try to put it in simple terms. See, what they try to say here in the D point is, you can send negative confirmation request. If you know the third party very well, if you know the third party very well that if he, if you send a mail to him, he will definitely see. And if he finds something wrong, he will definitely respond back to you. 
do know the third party very well that he will read all the mails and if he finds any mistake in the mail he will definitely reply back to your confirmation request he will not disregard that means he will not ignore your mail he will definitely read it and if you find something wrong he will definitely respond back to you that confidence you are having on the third party you know the third party very well that the third party will not ignore your request he will confirmly reply back to you if there is something wrong if you know the third party very well then also you can send a negative confirmation request the same sentence they put it in complicated terms they say that the auditor is not aware of circumstances that means you did not come across any circumstances which make you believe that recipient will disregard the controls Re sorry recipient will disregard the request that means you did not come across any such circumstances where third party intentionally ignore your request which i put it in other way which means that you know the third party very well that he will not ignore this request he will definitely see my mail if he finds something wrong he will definitely respond back to me that much confidence you are having on the third party then also you can go for negative confirmation request understood so this sentence is a bit tricky guys see they are trying to say it in an indirect way as an auditor you did not come across any such circumstances where the third party will disregard will ignore your request that means if i put it in other way around you know the third party very well that he will not ignore your request he will definitely respond back if something is wrong if you have that much confidence on the third party then also you can go for negative confirmation request so they say that in the third point as an auditor you can use negative confirmation request as the sole substantive audit procedure as the only audit procedure when all of these conditions are present which conditions when you know that risk is very low and also controls are functioning very effectively when the items are very small and homogeneous you are expecting a very low exception that means you are expecting very low differences there generally in that area differences will not arise and also you know the third party very well that they will not disregard your request they will not ignore your request you know the third party very well so when all the situations are present then as an auditor you can use negative confirmation request as your only audit procedure if any of these points are missing there you should not take the risk you should go for positive confirmation request understood so this is what this point is talking about that means the standard is giving the guidance in which kind of areas the auditor can use only negative confirmation request clear one thing is very sure you should not use negative confirmation request as the only audit procedure wherever the risk is very high and you can use negative confirmation request as the only audit procedure when all the circumstances are present comfortable everybody till here now let us have a look at the next part of the standard so now we are left with two more two more small parts let us try to cover them also e point management's refusal to allow the auditor to send the confirmation request see as an auditor you want to send a confirmation request to some third party but management is refusing what management is doing they're refusing i told to the management sir i want to communicate with your data but management says no sir we will not let you communicate with our data then you will look first a doubt you should come sir to communicate with the third party why i should take the permission of the management sir to communicate with the third party first of all why i should take the permission of the management see i told in the second step where in the second step when you want to select the appropriate conforming party you don't have any other choice no you have to go and ask the management who will be the appropriate conforming party so you want to communicate with some third party you want to send external confirmation request but management is saying no we will not permit you to communicate with the third party then what you should do so then what you should do they say a simple thing here so this i have summarized it in the form of this chart so if you see here this one this part of the chart so management's refusal to send the confirmation request i want to send a confirmation request to the third party but management is refusing then what you will do sir what the standard is asking you to do is if the management is refusing you to send the confirmation request first go to the management and ask them the reasons what you should do you should go and inquire them the reasons sir i want to communicate with the debtor you are telling no tell him the reason why why you don't want me to communicate with the third party why you don't want me to send a confirmation request with the third party inquire the reasons now sometimes what will happen is management will give you reasonable justification sometimes management will give valid reasons like for example i want to communicate with the data management said no i asked them sir why are you saying no i want to communicate with your data why are you stopping me the management gave me a reason like sir we have some case going on with the data data is not paying us some money we filed a case the case is going on between us 
Krita is very much angry on us. He is very much frustrated with us. He want to take revenge on us. So that's why when you send external confirmation, even though the information is correct, to mislead you, he will give you wrong information only. So this is what the management is saying. So some dispute is going on between us and the third party. He is very much angry with us. So intentionally to mislead you, even if you ask for confirmation, intentionally he will give you wrong information only. Management gave me this reason. I verified whether really the case is going on or not. Yes, really the case is going on. Is that a reasonable justification? Yes. So whenever management refuses you to send the confirmation request, first go and ask them reasons. Ask them, sir, why are you not uh, letting me communicate with the third party? Then management will give you reasons if you find it as a reasonable justification. That means management is giving you valid reasons why you should not go and communicate with a third party. Then what you should do, sir, then what the standard says is, in case if the management gives you valid reason why you should not communicate with the third party, then what as an auditor you can do is, you can perform alternative audit procedures. What auditor can do? Try to perform alternative audit procedure. Sir, what could be alternative audit procedure? It could be anything. You apply your mind and think of alternative audit procedure. So that means you think of anything. What else you can do to obtain audit evidence regarding that balances. Now, if alternative audit procedures are also not possible, sir, I'm not able to think of any alternative audit procedure. What you have to do is first go and communicate the matter with those charged with Gandhans. If there is any top level management, go and tell to them, sir, I'm unable to communicate with the third party. I'm unable to get evidence from alternative audit procedures. Will you be able to help me out? If communicating with the those charged with Gandhans are also not helping you out, finally modify the opinion. Finally, what you do? Modify the opinion. Till here, everybody are comfortable. So, I have explained only one half. If the management refuse to send the confirmation request, go to the management, ask them the reasons. If they give reasonable justification, well and good, try to perform alternative audit procedures. If alternative procedures are also not possible, communicate with the those charged with Gandhans and modify your opinion. Sir, which kind of modification here, sir? See, this is a case of non-availability of audit evidence. You are unable to obtain audit evidence. Then what you will do? You will give either qualified opinion or disclaimer of opinion. If the possible effect is only material but not pervasive, I will give qualified. If the possible effect is material and also pervasive, I will give disclaimer. Now, let us come to the other part of the chart. Sir, what if there is no reasonable justification? I went to the management and told, sir, I want to communicate with your third party. Now, the management said no. I asked them reason. They are giving me all the bullshit reasons. No justification at all. Or they are not giving reason at all. Either they are giving me all the bullshit reasons. I went to them and told them, sir, I want to communicate with your debtor. They told no. I asked why. They told, I don't know. That's all. Don't ask me any reason. We will not permit you to communicate with the debtor. Tell me, is it acceptable? Or they are giving me all the bullshit reasons. They are telling, sir, we forgot the email. We don't have email address with us. So our records got deleted. So some bullshit reasons they are giving. That means there is no reasonable justification. When there is no reasonable justification, then what you will do? Then what the standard says is, reassess your risk of material misstatement. You need to reassess your risk of material misstatement. Why? Because now you got to know true nature of the management. Earlier you might have thought management are honest people. You thought risk is very low. But now when you have to communicate with the third party, they are showing their true color now. Earlier, earlier you don't know this. You thought management are honest. But when the time came, when I want to communicate with the third party, now they are not giving me valid reasons. Now I got extra information regarding management. Now I came to know they are dishonest people. So you might have earlier thought risk is low. You thought management are honest people and you thought risk is very low. But now you got to know about the true nature of the management. Now you need to reassess your risk of material misstatement. Earlier you thought risk is very low. Now you reassess your risk of material misstatement. And also consider especially since the management are dishonest, is there a possibility of happening of fraud? So reassess your risk of material misstatement and make changes to your audit procedures. Why? Because now you got to know extra information regarding management. Now you got to their true. Uh, you got to know their true nature. They are dishonest. Reassess your risk of material misstatement and try to make changes to your audit procedures. And finally, communicate with the those charged with governance and modify the opinion. See, when there is no reasonable justification here before modification, you need not do alternative audit procedures. You will do alternative audit procedures when there is reasonable justification. When there is no reasonable justification, just reassess the risk of material misstatement and modify. No need to do alternative audit procedures. Why? Because you want to know about the true nature of the management. 
understood everybody so this is what that particular paragraph says that's what i have presented it in the form of a chat and i have explained this for you okay so now when we read it you will get to know it so if the management refuses to allow the auditor to send a confirmation request the auditor shall inquire as to management's reasons for the refusal and seek audit evidence as to their validity and reasonableness so if the management is refusing you to communicate with the third party first ask them reasons and also try to obtain evidence how far those reasons are valid and reasonable that means are they giving genuine reasons or they are just trying to mislead you try to find it out evaluate the implications of management's refusal on the auditor's assessment of relevant risk of material misstatement including risk of fraud and nature timing and extent of audit procedures see they are referring to this case second case so when they did not give you a reasonable justification what we should do reassess our risk of material misstatement consider is there any need to reassess your risk of material misstatement why because you got to know the true nature of the management now so that's why reassess your risk of material misstatement and make suitable changes to your nature timing and extent of audit procedures next perform alternative audit procedures designed to obtain relevant and reliable audit evidence when you will perform alternative audit procedures when you have when the management give reasonable justification then we will try to perform alternative audit procedures guys this chart is much more uh, detailed see in the standard the language is bit vague but when you uh, in this chart format i try to explain the concept in a even much better manner so you have to follow or you have to perform alternative audit procedures if the management gives reasonable justification and then finally if the auditor concludes that management's refusal to allow the auditor to send a confirmation request is unreasonable <clears throat> or the auditor is unable to perform relevant and reliable audit evidence from alternative audit procedures so once again if you come back to the chart if your management gave you reasonable justification you tried to perform alternative audit procedures but alternative audit procedures are not possible or management did not give you reasonable justification in both the cases what we will do first we will communicate the matter with those charged with governance and also we try to modify the opinion and also consider implications for modification of auditor's opinion that means even we try to modify our opinion also clear see whatever content is there in the chart here the same thing i try to summarize it in the form in the paragraphical format here the same thing i try to summarize this chart is very much easier to read and remember so once again summary guys come on if the management refuses the auditor to send a confirmation request first ask the reasons check whether those reasons are valid or not if there is a reasonable justification try to perform alternative audit procedures if there is no reasonable justification reassess the risk of material misstatement management did not give any justification or management gave justification but you are unable to perform alternative audit procedures in both the cases first communicate with those charged with governance and then modify the opinion that's it so simple so follow this chart that will be much easier than the paragraphical explanation given there next last part very simple part we are done with this responses to external confirmation request are not reliable see in the previous point management did not allow you to send the confirmation request this point management gave you permission to send the confirmation request you got the response from the third party also but those responses are not trustworthy you are unable to rely on that responses you have doubt over reliability of responses so what they are trying to say here is so if i put it in simple terms so you are an auditor you send a confirmation request to third party third party gave back the response also but you have a doubt regarding reliability you got doubt regarding reliability you tell me when you will get a doubt regarding reliability of external confirmation when we generally get a doubt regarding reliability of external confirmation is when we came to know that third party is not independent of my client the third party is not independent then i will get a doubt regarding reliability like for example my client is having a debtor my client is x limited okay now debtor is y limited i send a confirmation request sir my client is saying that you are required to pay 1 crore rupees of money to my client company is it yes or no third party gave response yes sir y limited gave a confirmation but later i came to know that x limited and y limited both are related parties or y limited is a subsidiary of x limited now you will generally get a doubt regarding reliability you know so this is the circumstances where you will get a doubt regarding reliability of audit evidence when when you came to know that third party is not independent of your client's organization even though you got the response but still you doubt the reliability you will have that question mark in your mind how far this evidence is reliable then what you should do 
let us see what we should do if the auditor identifies factors that give rise to doubts about reliability of responses to a confirmation request the auditor shall obtain further audit evidence to resolve the matter so generally if you come across any factors which will bring a doubt regarding reliability of audit evidence what is the example of the factor see the example of the factor is like you came to know uh, the third party is not independent that is one of the factor which will give a doubt to me that reliability of audit evidence is not there then you should obtain further audit evidence to resolve the doubts see the moment when you get the doubt what you should do is you should perform further audit procedures you should try to obtain audit evidence to determine whether external confirmation is really correct or wrong first you will get a doubt the moment you get a doubt you have to dig deeper and find out external confirmation is really reliable that means external confirmation is really correct or wrong you have to dig deeper you came to know third party is not independent you got a doubt now so it is your responsibility to perform in-depth audit procedures and find out whether external confirmation is reliable or not now when you dig deeper you decided that yes external confirmation is not reliable my client my third part my client has made the third party he has polluted with the third party and he made him give wrong confirmation i got to know it first i got a doubt then i performed in-depth audit procedures and i finally decided that yes my client manipulated the third party and made him give the wrong confirmation then what i should do let us able to understand guys able to follow it first you will get a doubt when you get the doubt you investigate further by that you will come to know whether really external confirmation is manipulated you got to know that yes your client made the third party and uh, made him give manipulated confirmation then what you will do if the auditor determines that response to the confirmation request is not reliable that means you investigated further and finally decided yes the third party gave a wrong response then the auditor should evaluate implications on the assessment of relevant risk of material misstatement including risk of fraud here also same if you came to know that your client has manipulated the third party and made him give the wrong confirmation now also you got to know about true nature of the management reassess your risk of material misstatement consider the risk is you need to revise your risk of material misstatement and make appropriate changes to your nature timing and extent of audit procedures and also consider modifying the opinion very simple part guys f point is very simple first if you came to know that external if you have first if you get any doubt regarding external confirmation responses investigate further and after investigation if you have decided yes external confirmations are not reliable then you have to reassess your risk of material misstatement reconsider your risk of material misstatement and make changes to your nature timing and extent of audit procedures and also consider modifying the opinion that's all with this we are under we are done with understanding conceptual understanding of sa 505 so whatever we have understood in this entire standard that is there in the form of chat here before you just in a few minutes you can revise and remember all the content i have summarized everything here so like as you could see first we have understood definitions what is the meaning of external confirmation what is positive confirmation request what is negative confirmation request what is the meaning of exception this also i presented it then we understood what is the meaning of non-response then what are the steps involved in confirmation procedure number one you have to determine the information to be confirmed so as i have told generally we use it for amounts and balances we can also use it for other information then you have to select appropriate confirming party number three you have to design the confirmation request while designing what factors you have to consider like risk of material misstatement presentation past experience assertion method of communication management authorization etc and the last step you have to do the follow up then then we understood a paragraph which is talking about in what circumstances we can use negative confirmation request like when the risk is low when the controls are effective recipient does the disregard request small and homogeneous population and you are expecting a low exception rate and if the management refuses to send you confirmation request what you will do apart from that one small paragraph i have left it out this anyhow is very simple one what if the written representation responses are not reliable simple we'll investigate further and if you have decided yes really written representations are not sorry if really external confirmations are not reliable then what we will do we will reassess our risk of material misstatement so the entire standard i have tried to summarize in the form of this simple chart this you can use it for your quick revision and also for your preparation clear so that's all for this session guys in the next class we'll try to solve the questions out of this sa 505 and proceed with the next standard that's all for today see you in the next class bye everybody take care